um, hello so we are going to do November 2023 paper 1 HL that is MCQ question number 1 the resistive force F that acts on an object moving through a fluid at a speed V is given by the formula F is equals to K into velocity where K is a constant we have to find the unit of K so in order to find the unit of K let's derive its formula from here it's force over velocity from Newton's second law force is mass into acceleration upon velocity mass can be written as kg acceleration is meter per second square and velocity is meter per second so meter cancels out and we get kg meter per second sorry kg per second so this gives us the option d as the correct option moving to question number two the graph shows the variation of the acceleration a with time t of an object moving in a straight line so this is our uh, graph given for acceleration and time so we know that the uh, gradient of uh, vt graph that is the velocity time graph gives us acceleration so here if we see the gradient should first increase and then it should decrease so obviously b and c cannot be the options because it's not varying linearly so either it's a or c so we want the gradient to be first increasing and then decreasing that means the gradient should first increase and then it should decrease something of this sort which is option a moving to question number three a projectile moving in air has a path shown what is the direction of the net force at the point shown at this point what is the net force so what are the forces acting on the uh, object on the projectile at this position obviously we'll have its weight mass mg we'll have air resistance or we can say drag which is frictional force so our uh, uh, resultant force will lie between this weight and drag only so it will lie obviously towards mg because um, weight is more as compared to the air resistance so it will be b b is the correct option question number four the diagram shows two blocks of mass small m and capital M in contact on a frictionless surface. A force F is applied on the block of mass M and causes the blocks to move with an acceleration A. So we have two masses big M and small m and they are asking us to calculate the force that the block of mass capital M exerts on the block of mass small m. So basically we know that when these two objects are in contact with each other there will be two normal forces one will be the normal force this and one will be normal force produced by this. So obviously the force will be M into A, which is option B. Question number 5 says, the diagram shows a block of mass M sliding at a constant speed down an inclined plane. The plane makes an angle theta with the horizontal. Now the coefficient of dynamic friction is given. So if I just talk about the forces acting on this block right now, so we will have, uh, it is moving down. So we will have a frictional force acting backwards, we will have a normal force, we will have uh, its mg cos theta and we will have mg sin theta. We have to calculate the uh, value of theta. So I, from this uh, uh, diagram I can, I can write two equations that the force of friction will be equal to mg sin theta and my normal force will be equal to mg cos theta correct now this mg sine theta is actually for if I talk about force of friction force of friction is also given as coefficient of dynamic friction into normal so both are the force of friction so I can equate both of them so I can write mg sine theta is equals to mu d into n so I can write sine theta is equals to mu d n over mg or if I have to calculate theta theta can be written as sine inverse of mu d n over mg which is option d question number six says then an object falls from rest in vacuum it's vacuum so uh, uh, that means the acceleration will be kind of constant r is the rate of the change of kinetic energy with time how does r vary with t so if i write the equation because it is uh, in vacuum so i can write v is equals to u plus at because this is uniformly accelerated motion or i can simply write it as v is equals to gt because initial velocity it is falling from rest so initial velocity is zero and it is falling in vacuum so i can consider acceleration to be equal to g 
now what is velocity velocity is change of displacement over time in this case an object is falling from a certain height so that height becomes the distance so change of distance over displacement over time i'll write it as negative reason it's falling down is equals to gt now i want to uh, get a graph graph of kinetic energy versus time so i need to have a uh, equation maybe so i will try to make a equation maybe a straight line or whatever so what i'll do is i will multiply both the sides by mg so i am multiplying both the sides by mg so mg delta h by delta t and this become because g is already there so mg square t now either i write mg delta h this is potential energy or i can write it as kinetic energy also reason being because it is in vacuum so rate of uh, the total energy will remain conserved whatever is the potential energy is the kinetic energy so mg square by t now if i compare this equation with y is equals to mx plus c so this is rate of change of kinetic energy which is r so i can also write it as r which is given in the question so r is rate of change of kinetic energy plotted on y on y x or uh, we don't have any y intercept so i'll write it as zero m is mg square and on x axis i am plotting t so i can compare this equation with the equation of a straight line so that means option a is the correct answer because i am getting a straight line equation question number 7 question number 7 says that the mass of x is equals to twice of mass of y and kinetic energy of x is twice uh, is four times so it's four times of kinetic energy of y they are asking us to calculate the value of momentum of x over momentum of y so we have a formula relating kinetic energy and momentum which says kinetic energy is uh, momentum squared by 2m so if i have to calculate the momentum here so i can calculate the formula for momentum it will be 2m into ek and it will be squared let me remove the square and put in square root here now i have to calculate the ratio of momentum of x and momentum of y so it becomes mass of x kinetic energy of x over mass of y and kinetic energy of y substituting the values from here whatever was given in the question so i am let me just cancel out this root 2 so i am left with mass of x which is twice of mass of y kinetic energy of x is four times of kinetic energy of y it's under the root over root m mass of y and kinetic energy of y i am just substituting the values from whatever was given in the question now this mass of kinetic uh, mass of y and kinetic energy of y cancels out so i get root 8 which gives me 2 root 2 so the correct option is c question number 8 energy is supplied at a constant rate to a fixed mass of a substance the graph shows the variation of the temperature of the substance with time so i can clearly see that this is a temperature time graph and at some points the temperature remains constant which we call latent heat so this is latent heat of fusion and this is latent heat of vaporization latent heat is basically the hidden heat where the temperature doesn't rise but that heat the provided heat goes into breaking up the bonds to convert or to change the state of matter latent heat of fusion basically solid converts to liquid and latent heat of vaporization the liquid converts to gas so i can clearly see that bigger the uh, horizontal line the bigger is the latent heat so latent heat of vaporization is more than the latent heat of fusion so latent heat of vaporization is more than the latent heat of fusion so a is the correct answer now next is for a fixed mass of an ideal gas the pressure is proportional to what so let me write the ideal gas equation pv is equals to nr into t um let me they are not uh, let me just modify this equation a little bit so instead of taking this uh, volume here i am taking it in the denominator here now i know density is mass over volume or i can write volume is mass over density so i'm just substituting this value of volume over here this is mass over density this density goes in the numerator now just solving out this equation now n is constant mass is constant r is constant that means the pressure is proportional to t and pressure is also proportional to density so it is proportional to temperature and density so absolute temperature and density that means b is the correct option 